Lots of news. Let's jump into ThreatWire. JFrog published a blog post outlining a novel typo squatting attack for Python developers. The attack, named a revival hijack, takes advantage of deleted packages in a package registry. Some package management systems do not account well for when a package on it gets deleted. Bad actors can quickly create new packages of the same name, but containing malicious or vulnerable code. Given the name of the package doesn't get changed, the new package begins to get included in users' projects. In the focus of their work, JFrog specifically explored revival hijacks in the PyPI package index system. Originally, when a package is deleted in the PyPI by the maintainer, an alert of the potential consequences is shown, which explains the fact that the name will be available for users of the PyPI system to be registered, as well as other things like deleting all releases of the package. In the case of PyPI, when a bad actor creates a new version of the previously deleted package and updates the version, automated tools like CICD tooling and pip upgrade commands will show the package to be out of date and will automatically update the out of date package. No warnings are shown slash no notifications are given that the package is now by a different maintainer. It is just installed. In an exploration of the existing and no longer existing packages on the PyPI index, they found that over 120,000 packages are viable for revival hijacking. However, narrowing down to packages that had over 100,000 downloads, as well as are not malicious or spam, they established that over 22,000 packages are susceptible. Following in the steps of what NPM does, the team at JFrog created a user named security underscore holding, which creates packages to hold the name of old deleted popular packages on the PyPI registry, preventing this form of typo squatting. Since creating this user, they've already had over 200,000 downloads of these safely squatted packages. In Adobe's version of Patch Tuesday, the workings for a potential zero day was patched in the Adobe Reader product. The vulnerability noted by CVE 2024-41869 was originally reported in June by Haifi Lee, founder of Xbon. The CVE was given a score of 7.8, not critical, but of high status. This is because the CVE has a proof of concept available in the wild, however, it does not fully lead to the assumed remote code execution, however, can be used to do so. Lee explained in his version of the patch announcement that while it is not a completely working exploit, it is a viable proof of concept. It takes advantage of a use after free vulnerability, which occurs when memory is released by the program, but is still actively accessed by the program. The vulnerability was originally disclosed to Adobe earlier this summer and was supposedly patched by Adobe in August. When retested by the team at Xmon post-original patch, the vulnerability was still viable. The new patch is finally resolving this vulnerability. A new social engineering attack has been uncovered by the team at Reversing Labs, targeting developers through fake technical assessments. This campaign lures candidates with the promise of job opportunities from well-known U.S. financial services companies. For those unfamiliar with the typical developer interview process, it often involves a recruiter call, a technical assessment, and an on-site interview. However, in this case, in some cases, the candidates can go straight to the technical test. The attack was first detected by reversing Labs' Spectra Intelligence platform using rules from Japan's Computer Emergency Response Team. Developers were asked to install Python scripts as a part of a coding challenge which contained hidden malware. The candidates were then instructed to send screenshots of their completed work, ensuring the malicious code had been executed on their computers. The malicious code was embedded into the init.py files of legitimate looking Python packages. These files were compiled into Py C binaries and obfuscated using base64 encoding. Once executed, the malware sent HTTP POST requests to a command and control server, receiving further malicious commands in response. One of the most interesting aspects of the investigation was how the team got in contact with the victim of the attack and what happened after. During their analysis, they found .git files in one of the malicious repositories, which contained logs revealing the full name and email addresses of a developer who had fallen victim. 
The developer had been contacted by a LinkedIn profile impersonating a Capital One employee and was asked to complete a coding challenge as a part of the fake interview process. On the same day that Reversing Labs reached out to the developer, a dormant GitHub account named PonPon262612 became active and uploaded a new repo with similar malicious code. The last time this repo had been active was the day the victim was hit with the social engineering attack. This suggests that the attackers may still have access to the developer's machine or were actively monitoring the situation. Fortinet, a cybersecurity company providing tools like firewalls, endpoint security, and security operations, announced they suffered a data breach of their own. An AWS S3 bucket containing data regarding the Fortinet Azure SharePoint instance, which acted as a shared file drive, was accessed by hackers. 440 gigabytes of data was downloaded and published to hacking forums. This hack was confirmed by Fortinet via blog post on September 12, 2024. An individual gained unauthorized access to a limited number of files stored on Fortinet's instance of a third-party cloud-based shared drive which included limited data relating to a small number, less than 0.3% of Fortinet customers. According to Bleeping Computer, this incident did not involve any encryption, ransomware, or access to the company's corporate network. Thank you so much for watching ThreatWire for September 16th, 2024. If you want to support this ad-free show, please head over to patreon.com slash ThreatWire. If you want to find me online, you can find me everywhere at Ending With Ali, including Minecraft. And remember, good luck, have fun, and don't get caught.